dear students welcome back in the previous lecture we had uh, defined what is an ODE or is an ordinary differential equation and we gave the notion of linearity of an uh, ODE, ODE the order of an ODE and so on so in this lecture we will proceed from there um, we will now give the notion of solution of an ODE because finally our aim is to solve differential equations so when we say we want to solve differential equation what do you mean by a solution what do you mean by solution of a differential equation okay so let's start with the first type of solution which is called the explicit solution so we say a function u which is from i to r is an explicit is an explicit solution to the differential equation 2.1 2.1 is if you remember 2.1 is uh, whatever we had we had defined as uh, right for any kth order we had defined it as y prime y x equal to 0 so, my, so the 2.1 is precisely this okay 2.1 is precisely this so if you have an ODE which is of this form then uh, we say an unknown function u we say an unknown function u is an explicit solution to this OD here on y if if this happens that is uh, if the unknown function u is as many times differentiable as j and it, and it satisfies I mean, sorry, as many times differentiable as the derivative existing in 2.1, right? What I'm saying is that the, the unknown function u should be differentiable explicitly, I mean, uh, for all j, that j that explicitly appears in 2.1. For instance, we have seen situations in differential equations where you can have some partial derivative coefficients becoming zero and so on. Anyway, it doesn't matter in the case of derivatives because if, fun if a function is uh, kth order and if then which means that the function has to be uh, at least k times differentiable which means that all lower order derivatives also exist, right? So what we mean here is that if, if it's a kth order ODE then, the fun then this function should be at least k times differentiable and then it should satisfy the expression 2.1 explicitly for all x in the domain right the expression that we had written down that f of something equal to 0 this has to be satisfied by u so basically u k so on up to x this should be satisfied okay so whenever this happens we say it's a solution so that's easy to uh, so that's easy to uh, understand right so that's natural solution i mean uh, you are looking for a um, function which satisfies the equation and if it has to satisfy the equation it has to be differentiable as many times as the derivatives appearing in the equation okay sorry okay okay so it should be differential as many times and should satisfy 2.1 in i then you say that that is an explicit solution an example quickly is that you can check immediately that um, this y2 sin x plus 3 cos x right this function is an explicit solution to this od here how do you verify this you just plug this y in here so you differentiate this twice 
you can immediately see that if you differentiate this twice you are going to get the sign derivative of sine is cos cos is minus sine so you are going to get two so basically minus 3 cos x this is precisely y double prime okay and y is this so if you sum them you can see that they are zero so this is very uh, easily very satisfied in fact if you notice here that there is nothing special about this uh, 2 and 3 I could replace this with any constant c1 and c2 you still get minus c1 and minus c2 and if you sum them you so, so this is still satisfied so instead of 2 and 3 if I replace any random constant any real number c1 c2 uh, that is still a solution okay so and that's an explicit solution why because this is differentiable at least as many times as the derivative appearing in the od here and it satisfies this equation this is what is called an explicit solution okay uh, we should just say this is a solution to the ODE, right? What is this uh, adjective that we are saying it is explicit solution? Is this uh, is due to this fact that uh, this y, that is the unknown function y, can be can be expressed explicitly in terms of the x variable, that is the dip, that is the independent variable. That is what motivates us the name explicit, right? In other words. Uh, whatever solution that you have has a precise formula in terms of the independent variable and this actually can be given as a graph of some function right if you plot this you are going to get some graph right something right so so this is as a, so whenever your solution curve is uh, actually can be plotted as a graph of the function in the r2 plane right this is the r2 plane right and then you are basically saying that it's an explicit solution okay now what is an uh, what is an uh, implicit solution an implicit solution is uh, something so we say a, any relation which is now a function of x and y variable you have you have v which is a uh, function of x and y variable we say so this is an expression which involving both x and y and that you say is an implicit solution to that expression ODE 2.1 that f of something 0 if it defines at least one real function u of x variable which is explicit okay so this v is a solution it's an implicit solution to 2.1 if this v so from v we can extract at least one real function which is an explicit solution okay i'm going to show you an example what do i mean by this for instance take this v this is a relation between x and y variable right okay so in the r2 in the r2 plane this is a circle of a radius 5 centered at origin right and this is an exp and this is an implicit solution of y y prime equal to for instance if you of course if you differentiate this and see that this will actually satisfy this ode okay satisfy this ode in this domain okay and but why it is not explicit solution but an implicit solution is because you can i mean you uh, when you say explicit you should be able to write y in terms of the independent variable x okay but if you try doing that here what you will get is uh, y square is equal to 25 minus x square right You will get this, and I should say, let's say, oh, sorry, I should not say y square because I have taken the square root. So, y of x is uh, okay, y of x is 25 minus x square. So, this 
uh, is the expression that you get for y in terms of x but this is not even a function this is multi-valued right because for every x you have two possible values of y right whereas if i restrict uh, my so if you actually look at this what is this expression if you plot this uh, thing in the r2 as i said is a circle so what you get is a circle of radius y centered at origin right so what you can do th this is not an explicit solution though this curve is a solution to this ode but if i restrict it let's say if i look just look at this piece of this uh, this curve the upper part of this curve that is a solution okay so y is not a function of x because it's multi-valued but if i restrict to some part of the curve i get a function precise function so on this part this is a valid function it is not multi-valued for each x i get exactly one value similarly u2 similarly u2 is the lower part of the so y is not a function of x but you can uh, uh, locally think of it as a function of x right that is what uh, implicit solution means implicit means that you can extract at, at least one like here in this case i can I, we actually have two but even if you can extract only one uh, and real function which is an explicit solution now this is also a solution to this ODE right this is a solution to this ODE this is a solution to this ODE and this is also a solution to this ODE right so they satisfy that so this is what is called a implicit solution where it satisfies the ODE and you can get you can extract at least one explicit solution okay this is what is called an uh, implicit solution okay so what is the difference between uh, explicit solution and implicit solution earlier we said for an explicit solution it is graph of a function whereas for an, imp uh, an implicit solution is not a graph of a uh, solution but locally that is some part locally it's it's a graph of some solution curve right like in the example that i in this example for this v you had a circle this was not a graph of a function but if i restrict to some region it is graph of a function that is how uh, so and that and this part is an explicit solution separately this part is an explicit solution separately okay okay so now mm, let's um, look at another uh, form of solution which is which is called the formal solution okay what is the formal solution let's look at the previous example okay with what did we show we showed that this relation the v that we had was a solution to this ode right solution to this ode and how did we obtain this that this is a solution to this ode how did we obtain this you just implicitly differentiate it right you say if you differentiate this you get 2x plus 2y y prime this is 0 so equal to 0 and this is precisely this od that is how you uh, different where uh, kind of verified that this v satisfies this od right so let's do now you see instead of uh, minus here i could take plus here Okay, suppose I take plus here instead of minus here, replace this sign. This will be still be satisfied, right? This will still be satisfied. This expression will this o, this OD is still satisfied by this V where I change the sign, right? So that's what I want to highlight here. So for implicit solution, the main condition was the fact that you can find a local explicit solution. Okay, for instance if i um, for instance i could uh, i could not have just concluded that this is a solution to this od just by differentiating with respect to x which was happening which can happen even with plus sign here so let's do that example i just replace the sign so whatever i have minus here i will replace plus this expression will also satisfy this od right if it, it satisfies this od on on implicit differentiation right 
but is it an e but is is this expression an implicit solution the answer is no why because it's not an implicit solution because if you write it in the form uh, y in terms of the independent variable what you get is an expression which is not even locally actually you what you have here is a complex value uh, because this is negative here so there is a negative in the square root you actually have a complex valued function okay uh, which is fine, but uh, then it is it cannot be interpreted in the sense of you can write it as a real value locally real valued function and a graph in R2 right locally a graph in R2 So which is why we this is also a solution. Yes, but this is not the implicit solution. It is formal solution Okay, so so this leads to a question do we do we allow complex valued uh, functions as solutions yes you can allow complex valued functions as solutions um, for i mean one is this example you can take this as a and this is a complex valued solution to this od that we had here earlier right without I mean, two can cancel can be removed so this is an od so this is a formal solution to this od and this is a complex value solution to this od and another example is if you take an od of this form okay you uh, one can just by integrating one can obtain that this is uh, the family of solutions that you can obtain for this uh, od and this is complex value this i is the complex i imaginary number i okay so you do allow complex value but they now form at least at this stage uh, at the at, at, for the first course level we call them formal solutions all these are formal solutions okay so what we have seen is three types of solution that is explicit solution implicit solution and formal solutions okay okay so henceforth we will not distinguish uh, so, so whenever we say we are going to find a solution we are not going to distinguish between them uh, we can find implicit explicit implicit and formal solution and all will just be referred to as a solution okay okay now now that we have the notion of solution a natural question is do we always have solution for all differential equations right this was the natural equation even which we asked in algebraic equation do we always have solutions right if s yes, when if no why not and so on all these questions are valid questions right so do all so do all ODEs have solutions the answer is uh, and if s yes, how many right now let's look at an example so this ODE okay cannot have a solution why just by looking at you can conclude that there is no solution to this ODE why because whatever y you take even a complex value y let's say from some domain to r or the complex number c it's a real line or complex line whatever value you take uh, y so which means y prime will also be a function from i to r and so on then mod of y and mod of this will always be positive right whereas what is this saying here that this is equal to minus one so this can never happen right so just by uh, without much effort just looking at the equation sometimes you can conclude right that you cannot have a uh, y which on uh, y which satisfies this uh, differential equation given here because it cannot be satisfied so there are situations where you have no solutions right so you can have differential equations where we don't have solutions with the notion of solution that we have introduced okay okay so okay so now when do we have solutions okay so these are natural for instance let's look at this ode y prime equal to 2x 
right uh, now you can verify immediately uh, just by integrating you can see that uh, for any constant c in r this function y x square plus c uh, y equal to x square plus c is a solution to this OT, right you can just substitute and check right how would we get this you just integrate uh, both sides okay you can see that uh, you you get uh, y x equal to x square plus some constant now since you can choose any constant here so this definition of y depends on the constant c here now this is a solution to this OD. so what we see here is that when we say so when we say solution you actually have a one parameter family of solutions right because for every choice of c is a solution so the so you actually don't have one solution you actually have a family of solution you have infinite number of solutions indexed by real numbers so you have as many solutions as real numbers here right so here it's a family of solution but the good thing about this is that all the in, i mean all the solution i mean all the infinite solutions can be um, can be kind of uh, indexed by real number or so so you can so you have a compact form for all infinite so you have a formula for the infinite solution you can actually obtain all the infinite solution just by the choice of c here okay so that is um, so you so you can so first you as, as we saw in the previous example you can have no solutions and then when you have solutions you have uh, more than one solution but but you actually have a family of solutions okay now okay we have a family of solution um, is that it i mean is this the only possible solution to this differential equation do we have or do we have uh, solutions outside this family of solutions that situation uh, uh, can also happen so here i'm just uh, showing you the family of solutions so in this case the family of solutions are parabolas with intercept c here right here so this is the family of solutions that you are obtaining for this ode so the union of all these curves is going to is the entire r2 right you see so it's like that but but the solution is always along this para along the parabola right along the parabola Okay, so you have a family of solutions now what about uh, i mean have we solved one just by computing this have we found all the solutions to this i mean are these the only possible solutions to this in this case maybe yes because you can probably do by integration you can uh, come here and go back from here by differentiating and so on but that is not always the situation there are differential equations where just obtaining a family of solution doesn't mean you have obtained all the solutions like for instance take this ode here you can verify immediately that uh, this one parameter family of solutions uh, this one parameter family of functions is a solution to this ode okay you can just uh, substitute and verify that this is satisfied uh, but in addition you also see that the constant function 0 is also a solution to this ODE okay but this solution is not covered in this family of solutions so this solution is a solution outside this family of solutions so just because for instance suppose you we are I mean suppose you are given this uh, differential equation suppose you compute this as a solution yes it's a right solution but then have you computed all the solution no you have missed out this suppose you have computed this solution then you have missed out this so when you just because you have a family of solution you have i mean you have computed one family of solution doesn't mean that there are uh, i mean there are not other family of solutions that situation is also possible Right, so when we say we want to solve a differential equation, we would like to get all classes, all class of solutions, right? All family of solutions. Okay. So what do we so what do we do in this situation? So what we have seen is that we can have no solutions, we can have one family of solutions, we can have more than one family of solutions, and so on. So 
what do we uh, do in such situation is that uh, usually, usually in physical situations we we can uh, we can impose additional conditions to choose uh, one solutions from the family of solutions right and these additional conditions are called either uh, initial conditions or called boundary conditions you can even have mixture of these conditions with these additional conditions you can choose from the family of solutions probably it's uh, we can you can choose uh, a particular solution or a particular curve right right when, when i showed you the uh, example of uh, this i showed you there's a family of solutions here now if someone tells you that uh, i want uh, i want that solution which uh, which at some point uh, x not takes the value let's say uh, y not then you are going to say that uh, uh, i am going to pick uh, say let's say this uh, you are going to pick that curve which passes through x not and y not so that means all other the all these curves are ruled out right you only pick this curve so with additional conditions you are you, you can probably choose one or more solutions from the family of solutions right so that's and this also physically uh, makes relevance because usually when you write down differential equations uh, they uh, you also have some a priori informations and so on so these informations can be used to choose the choose the desired solution that we are expecting okay okay so like this is exactly what i explained here so among the family of solutions if you are given a point x not and if you are given a point y not then you choose that solution which passes through x not y not which means this is the choice of the curve and the other curves are all ruled out okay so such problems are so the condi so depending on the condition if it's an initial condition it's called an initial value problem if it's a boundary condition it's called a boundary value problem okay so what is an initial value problem so an initial value problem is precisely the 2.1 ODE that we had shown here. So the ODE, the relation that we have in terms of F, additionally with this condition. These are called initial conditions. What we have given here, the unknown is Y. So all its derivatives are unknown. So the relation is given and you know the value of the unknown function and its derivative at some point x naught in i so you have an interval i let's call it a b okay and you are looking for a unknown function y with with this as the domain right so what you do you, you pick there is some point x not fixed when i say x not belong to i bar here what i'm saying is that you could choose x not to be a or x not to be b as well okay in fact the uh, name initial value depends on that that usually you know what happens at time t equal to zero so you know what is the value of the function at uh, at the initial uh, time and using that you predict the future behavior okay so but when you have a kth order, when you have a kth order ODE, what you need is k conditions. So, so, for, so for an initial value problem, if you have a kth order ODE, you give the value of y at x0 and not just the value of y at x0, the value of, uh, value of the derivative of y at x0 up to k minus 1 derivative. So if you have a kth order ODE, you give the value of y up to k minus 1 derivative at just exactly one point okay not everywhere so we want to compute y value of y at the entire point what is given is the value at this point that this is given that's it and not just this the value of the functions uh, derivatives and so on so how did we know that we have to give exactly k conditions right but uh, that is uh, something that uh, I can explain motivate here for instance the example that we took y prime equal to 2x 
I sh we showed by integration that the family of solution is uh, x square plus c, right? So you are you see when you what are the uh, so the solution is given by a one parameter family of curves, which means that if you want to find if you want to compute this, you want to pick one solution y. It depends on finding this c. So you have one unknown constant. So this y is unknown in terms of the unknown c here, right? So if you can compute the c, then you have found your solution y. Now to compute the c, because it's first order, you got exactly one constant, so one condition. So for the first order ODE, you just give one condition here. Now for a sec, let's say let's do a second order ODE. Let's for instance. Let's take uh, y prime equal to 0, y double prime equal to 0. So if you integrate, you will get y prime is equal to some constant c. Okay, let's say c1. And then you integrate once more, you get uh, y is equal to c1x plus some c2. So for a second order ODE, you get a family of curves where there are two unknown constants. And this you can actually extend to if you do this for any kth order as well you will see that you will have uh, you will see that you will have uh, k minus one constant appearing right this uh, c1 x plus c0 so how many constants here? K minus so K constants here. C zero, C one up to K minus one. So for a kth order, you get K constants. So if you have to compute this K constant, you need K conditions. So I have just motivated this for a simple ODE. In fact, uh, this is what happens for any general ODE. So if you start with a kth order ODE, the number of unknown constant that you need to determine is uh, k so as a new so for initial value problem you have to give k conditions to find those unknown k constants okay that is how you so this is an initial value problem now let's look at some examples so the example that we took so you we already know that x square plus c where the possible uh, family of solutions here so now if you pick uh, if you say that uh, you want that solution which whose value is 4 at x equal to 1 that means you choose that parabola which passes through 1 comma 4 among this right so then you have a precise for instance if this is y x equal to x square plus c then what you are uh, given is uh, y of 1 is uh, 1 square plus c so y of 1 is given to be 4 which is 1 plus c so you get c is 3 which means uh, x square plus 3 is the solution that you are looking here for this problem assuming this is the only family of solutions right so that way see you had a family of solution you just picked one one family from that right so initial value problem so we have uh, one solution in this case right i mean that's not clear as yet we have not proved that but that's what happens in this case you can you will see such things later okay now another so this is a second order example this is also an example we have we have already uh, have shown you when when i define when i gave the definition of explicit solution i gave this as an example and uh, i had uh, said that uh, for any constant c1 c2 this is uh, c2 this is a solution right so you in this case it was second order so you see you had two unknown constants so for two unknown constants you need uh, two conditions um, and here uh, it, for initial value problem you just pick one point in this case the point x naught is pick to be 1 and once you pick that one point the value of y and all its derivatives are given at that point okay 
so use this information use using these two information if you can solve for c1 and c2 then you have you so then you have picked one solution to this ODE. okay these are what are called initial value problems okay the second thing is what are called boundary value problems i am going to only give you a definition of boundary value problem in the second order uh, in the second order setup um, so first of all for a first order ODE the notion of boundary value and initial value are same right because for a first order ODE uh, the number of conditions the unknown constants as I said is one so the number of con boundary conditions that you need for initial problem is exactly one right and as I already said that initial point could be on the boundary of the uh, domain as well it could be, I mean the x naught could be the end point a or b as well so you just need one point so you don't uh, so there is no so the boundary value problem and initial value problem are same for first order in the case of second order okay so in the case of second order so any general second order ODs of this form right that's what we have given as a definition so for is so for a second order ODE you have uh, many choices I'm going to give you four types of uh, choices that you can do so in addition to this OD you have to give uh, boundary conditions the one possible boundary condition is so you have the interval I let's call it a B for an initial value problem you just chose one point x naught for a first order problem I mean even for a kth order problem you just chose one point x naught so for a second order problem as we said there will be two unknown constants so you need two conditions for an initial value problem what you do you just give the value of y at x naught and the value of y prime at x naught but for boundary value problem you do you can do some so you for a boundary value problem there's there's another choice uh, of giving two conditions that is you pick two points which is why it's called two point boundary value problem sometimes you pick two points and then you give the value of y at both these points this is also two condition because for second order you need only two conditions initial value problem says you give the two conditions at one point uh, this says you pick two points but you give the value of y at Two points this is one possibility okay in the literature this is uh, usually called the Dirichlet condition okay this is the prototype of Dirichlet problem so don't worry about those jargon names and so on so this is one possibility so you pick two points and you give the value of y at these two points so you still have two conditions now so this is one type of boundary condition the another type is you pick two points instead of giving the value of y you give the value of y prime these two points you still have two conditions okay so for second order so for a second order that's what you do okay y prime at these two points so you have two conditions now and you if you use these two conditions you can compute the unknown uh, you can compute the unknown constants the third possibility is uh, you give a linear quiz you again do the same thing you pick two points x naught y naught okay then at x naught you give the linear combination of y and y derivative the value of that similar to the linear combination of y and y derivative at x1 okay okay so this is uh, this is another so this is another two conditions which you can give where your this c I mean this constant c1 c2 d1 d2 are real numbers which are given to you so c1 c2 is given y naught is given and so on so then using this two condition you can compute the two unknown constants for a second order ODE, right 
in fact if you look carefully you can actually observe that uh, this third condition uh, actually has the first condition and second condition depending on the choice of c1 and c2 for instance if c2 is 0 and d2 is 0 uh, you are in the first situation if uh, c1 is 0 and d1 is 0 you are in the second situation so this is a much more general condition than those two okay and then uh, finally here the fourth condition you don't give you don't prescribe the value of y at that point so you take two you take two points so far we have been giving the value of the unknown function at these two points unknown function and its derivative up to some point at, at these two points the fourth condition we don't give the value we just say that i don't know the value at x0 and x1 of the unknown function but they coincide so the value of y at x0 is same as the value of y at x1 now this is also an information though there is the exact value is not given but this is an additional information that the values coincide okay so but you need two conditions so this is one condition this is one condition and then you similarly for second order you say the first order derivative also coincides okay these are what are called periodic conditions okay so these are so these are four types of uh, conditions that you can give for a second order od and these are called boundary conditions so this is called a boundary value problem okay let us look at some examples for instance this is a second order boundary value problem okay so you need two conditions okay so i am giving so we have picked 0 and pi by 2 and we have given the value of y value of y at uh, 0 and pi by 2 it's an example of a boundary value problem two point boundary value problem for a second order equation this is again the same ODE, but I pick two different points 0 and pi and I give the value of y at thing. Similarly, I could have also given the value of y prime at two at some at some two points and so on. So all possible uh, whatever we have described now, four conditions, four types of conditions can be given for a second order boundary value problem. Okay. Okay. So now do all, uh, so why did we come into this uh, initial value boundary value problem? You had a family of solutions, right? You had a family of solutions and uh, you were asking this question, whether, I mean, how many solutions do you have? You have, you had situation of no solution, family of solution, solutions outside family of solution, solution and so on. So now then we introduce this notion of uh, initial value boundary value problem to actually compute these unknown uh, parameters involved in the family of solutions and whether we can um, get exactly one solution and so on. So the question still remains. So now if, if I from an OD, if I, if I put this additional condition and make it an initial value problem or a boundary value problem, now can I say that uh, there is always a solution or if or, or if there are situations where there are no solutions then when can i have solutions all these questions can again uh, be asked so do all ibp or all initial value problem boundary value problem have solutions if s yes, now with this additional condition do i always have exactly one solution or do i still have more than one solution and so on okay now the example that we just showed uh, previously in the boundary that 3.1 i'll show you this this one this example okay this example here this cannot this this does not have solution no solution that you will see later when we solve for second order od with constant coefficient and so on but uh, just to motivate I, I have already shown you when when i when i mean i have already told you that uh, when when i gave the definition of explicit solution i said yx uh, some constant sine x 
plus some other constant this is a solution to this later in the course we will see that this is the only possible form of solution for this type of ODEs right now what you can immediately check is that if you use these conditions you cannot you cannot obtain both the constant c1 c2 c right because if i need to find a solution to this i need to compute c1 and c2 and uh, and the precise idea of giving these boundary condition is to evaluate these constants and get a solution if these conditions are not enough to evaluate these constants what did we say you need two conditions i mean you need two conditions to evaluate the two unknown constants but not any two condition will work Okay, so this is an example of that situation so here and here we have two conditions but these two conditions are not enough because they are given uh, at the wrong places and so on okay uh, so any arbitrary choice of two points and such things don't work so this is an example of that so in this case if you give so it's the same problem see the od is same od has not changed only the boundary conditions have changed from the point where the value of y is prescribed but this will have a solution this will not have a solution the same od but with different boundary conditions okay so even for a, uh, so for a boundary value problem you do have you so you still have the situation of having no solution okay whereas so in that situation you see it was a very simple OD is a linear homogeneous OD, right? This is a linear homogeneous OD. This OD, this OD is a linear homogeneous OD. So even in, in such a simple case, you have no solutions. Okay. So, so for a boundary value problem, you you can still have the situation of no solution. Whereas uh, we are now going to uh, state a theorem which uh, will tell you that for uh, initial value problem so special type of initial value problem you can always uh, talk about you can always show the existence of a solution under some conditions okay so if for initial value problem such things uh, don't happen i mean like the way boundary value problem did not admit a solution under some conditions of the data you can show that uh, there will always exist a solution at least one solution okay so we are going to state that result without uh, we are not going to prove it but we are going to give a uh, almost approximate idea towards the proof maybe in the next lecture and in another uh, um, as, a, as a method but now we will not, so we will not be giving proof of this statement so just know this result that there is an existence result so what is that result so okay so here this result is stated for as i said special initial value problem what do i mean by special is what i that is differential equation of this form so we are looking for first order differential equations so what did i say a first order differential equation the general form of a first order differential equation is this right and what is the special form here this is a special form where, so this could be non-linear we have already given the definition of linear non-linear so this ODE this differential equation this relation could be non-linear in y in y and its derivatives right what is the special form here this is a special form where this differential equation is a so this, so this can be a non-linear ODE for instance y could be uh, non-linear in uh, in in this f function so f can depend on y non-linearly but it's linear in the highest derivative that is so if it's a first order equation the highest order is one and uh, the differential equation is linear in the first order derivative so that's a special form that i was talking what i was mentioning about so you have a first order uh, od which is linear in the highest variable in this case first order derivatives f could be non-linear both in x and y that doesn't matter and because it's a first order initial value problem means you fix a point and you give the value of y at that point so this is a first order initial value problem so for such a problem for such a problem 
initial value problem where your domain is given right the domain for uh, x is given so once the domain for x is given you have so for instance if x is given the domain of x is given to be i right if the domain of x is given to be i let's say some a b then you are looking for a y so at least in r2 you have a strip right a b and when i say this so in r2 because the unknown that you are looking for should be a function on a b which means it's uh, it's that function should lie within the strip right i mean the graph of that function or even the local graph of that function should lie within the strip in r2 right so if you take this so this is i'm looking at the plane so this is in the x axis okay and in the y direction you have the strip which and then you have a uh, and then you have a domain omega in this strip which is what i stated here don't worry if you don't know what is connected subset and so on basically here it's just a generalization of the notion of interval you have in uh, thing so when i say connected set it may basically means that uh, it cannot be written as two disjoint union of uh, open sets or open uh, interval so in the case of uh, real line um, the union of two disjoint intervals is not a connected set whereas an interval is a connected set so uh, don't worry about that that's a condition that you need to have but that's in r2 so you have an open connected set some set contained in r2 but when we say r2 what we basically mean is in this strip and you choose a point x0 right and the value of y is given at x0 which is y0 which means y0 is some point here so this domain is such that it contains the point x0 y0 okay and in this domain this is the omega and in this domain the date the function f is given to be continuous in this domain okay so that's the condition that you want if f is continuous in some region of this strip that region that contains the point x not y not then this first order ode admits at least one solution when we say at least one solution what does it mean that the no solution is not a possibility you can have one solution or more than one solution so you always have a solution okay so this is the existence result for an initial value problem for a first order initial value problem okay okay now we have said at least one solution which means you can have more than one solution as well right that's what i mean. so this 3.2 is precisely this equation right so the initial value problem can have more than one solution right uh, can it have more than one solution in general the answer is uh, yes uh, for instance take this uh, differential equation with the domain i to be the entire real line r and you look at this initial condition that is x naught is zero and the value of y at x naught that is at zero is zero so this so this is a initial value this od with this condition is an initial value problem okay so you can immediately check that uh, the constant function y equal to zero is a solution basically to this initial value problem that means this y equal to zero satisfies this ODE and it also satisfies this initial condition right so you have uh, you have this uh, one solution but other than this you also have this family of solutions and you have infinitely many solutions so for each constant each uh, positive constant c this uh, this function will satisfy both this differential equation and this initial condition okay so you can have more than one solution is what we are saying and this can happen you see if you 
go back to the uh, graphical uh, interpretation that I gave you for uh, initial conditions and uh, I mean for boundary conditions like here I had given this interpretation so what did we mean if we give us an additional condition you are looking for that curve which passes through the point x0 y0 in this situation in this example the way I am showing I am showing as if only one curve is passing through but depending on the ODE and the initial uh, depending on the differential equation you can have more than one one curve from this family passing through x0 y0 so once you pick this point it's, it's not necessary that uh, you can have only so when you say no solution means what that there is no curve passing through x0 y0 and what does that theorem saying that we have just uh, stated that for initial value problem first order initial value problem of the special type that is not possible what is not possible that given x0 y0 no curve passes through x0 y0 is not possible right so you always have some curve passing through x0 y0 but you can have more than one curve passing through x0 y0 okay that's what it's happening it means here okay where are we okay not here yeah yeah so in this example that's what is happening you you have this initial condition and the family of solutions for for this ODE um, among those fam among those curves those passing through the origin 0 comma 0 is not just one curve you have more than one curve passing through origin that is why you have so many possibilities okay so what we have seen is that for boundary value problem you can have you can have the no solution situation whereas for the initial value problem of that special type that we have mentioned which is linear in the first order linear in the first order derivative you you cannot have no solution situation you have one or more solutions so now the next natural question is when can i have exactly one solution okay and that's picard's uniqueness theorem and that says that with this additional hypothesis that the partial derivative of f is also continuous partial derivative of f with respect to the y variable is also see so this f being continuous is something which we have already assumed for existence f continuous we have already assumed it f continuous f continuous we have already assumed um, for the existence right f is continuous this assumption is already there in addition to this assumption if you also assume that the y partial derivative of f is also continuous then this this result tells you that there is a h such that the first order initial value problem the same thing that is whatever we had the 3.2 this one this ode this ode this is 3.2 okay this is 3.2 this ode has exactly one solution but in this interval so what this is what is called so you, this result is giving you and the existence of an unique solution that is exactly one solution but not everywhere in the domain i so you start suppose you start with a domain i which is a comma b so what we what did we say you have this interval a b and for initial value problem there is some x naught chosen and the value of y is given at this point x naught which is y naught right so this theorem is telling you that with this additional condition that the partial derivative this partial derivative of y uh, of f with respect to the y variable is continuous then it is saying that you, you may not be i may not be able to find a solution in this entire uh, given interval but there is an h that i can find around x naught let's say x naught minus h and x naught 
plus h and in this region and in this domain if you look at the graph of y you have exactly one uh, function which satisfies the initial value problem so this is called a local existence result okay so it's giving you the existence of a solution uh, locally right Basically, this means if you think of the geometrical interpretation, this means that once you fix x naught and y naught, okay, there is a region, um, right? When so, if you fix x naught and y naught in R two, so in some region around it, uh, there is I mean, multiple curves. I mean, multiple solution curves don't intersect at this point. At the so here, exactly only one curve passes through. Okay, this is uh, Picard's uniqueness theorem. So you can extract. So you can have a unique solution in some neighborhood. In, in, so in some region of. So in some region around X naught. Okay. So this. Uh, so this is an existential theorem, which means that it it tells you the existence of an H. It does not give you a formula for H. Okay. This is something something maybe new to you. This is. Uh, very uh, common and natural in mathematics. So this is an existential. See, like the existence theorem, also the previous existence theorem, also just assured you that there is at least one solution. It did not give you a formula for the solution. It just told you, yeah, yes, there is a solution, but it is not giving you what that solution is. What is the formula for the solution? So this is called existential results. It it tells you about the existence of a solution but not the precise solution similarly here again it's this is telling you there is exactly one solution it is not giving a formula of the solution and it's also telling you that the solution is unique only in some region right and that region also it's not giving you a formula on, on how to find that region it says there is a region where the solution is unique okay so you will have to get used to these kind of mathematical uh, statements okay so now that uh, uniqueness theorem we are not going to prove this uh, result so let's look at some examples to verify the statements of this theorem so that you get used to it okay so first uh, uh, let's look at an uh, example <coughs> sorry so consider this um, ode with this initial condition so it's an initial value problem okay now what is the f here this is so your f x y is x square plus y square and your x naught is 1 and your y naught is 3 right x naught is 1 y naught is 3 this is your initial problem so if i need to verify the existence theorem and the uniqueness theorem i we only need to check uh, the hypothesis on this f okay so f x y is x square plus y square and the partial derivative of f with respect to y is 2y okay and both are continuous in every possible in every subset of every domain of r2 so in particular uh, they are continuous in any domain that contains one comma Three coming from the initial conditions right so they are continuous so by the Picard's theorem of both existence and uniqueness theorem because even the partial derivative is continuous so by the Picard's theorem there is there is an H such that there is a unique solution in the interval 1 minus H to 1 plus H okay this is what the theorem is telling you so it did not tell you what is the solution it did not tell you what is a H. It has only told you that you can find a H and in that uh, region you can find a unique solution. Okay, let's look at uh, another example. Um, let's take this ODE. Okay, with the initial condition. Oh, sorry, uh, just uh, I'll give the initial condition. So in this case, what is the F? This is F is here this is f and what is the partial derivative of f with respect to y this is this so you already see there is a problem here because this is y by 
square root of x. This is fxy. Obviously, x has to be non-zero because x is in the denominator. Second, there is a square root which means x has to be strictly positive because for negative x this doesn't uh, make sense, right? It's not real valued. So, if this is f, the domain is already restricted. You have to, if so the domain of uh, f, I mean, I mean the f is well defined only in the right half plane, right? Only in this open plane, that is you don't include the y-axis, the uh, region after y-axis on the, on the right hand side of y-axis. <coughs> okay, so, so this f is continuous, both this f and the partial derivative because the, 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 the partial derivative of y is also 1 by root x. So this is also valid as is well defined only on the right half plane and they are actually continuous in the open right half. When I say open right half plane, I basically mean that y axis is not included in the region. So x is strictly positive. Okay. So they are continuous in the right half plane, which means that if I have to give an initial condition x naught, y naught, I mean I have to give the x naught, y naught, I have to choose this in the right open right half plane. If I choose this point either on the y axis or on the left half plane, then it's not even valid because f is not even well defined there, right? So if I choose the initial condition 1, 2, right, which is uh, initial condition uh, 1, 2, then it is lying on the open right half plane, it will fit into the Picard's uh, existence and uniqueness theorem. Okay, So, if you take any region omega which contains 1, 2 and that region should not intersect with the y axis or the left half plane. So, it, if you take this 1, 2 somewhere here, so you take a domain like this, okay, something Okay, you take a domain, take a domain uh, like this somewhere on the right half plane, but it should not touch here, it should not come here or this side. Okay, as long as you are in that region, then you can find a by Picard's theorem, there is a unique solution for some, uh, there is a unique solution in some for some edge in some region. Okay. Whereas if you choose the initial condition 0, 2, 0, 2 is already lying on the uh, y axis, right? And there you, you cannot, it is not even defined, right? So what do we say? Can we say that with Picard's theorem there is no solution? No, you cannot conclude that, right? Because what is the theorem saying? Under some condition, the solution exists. If the conditions fail, that doesn't mean that the result is false. It will only mean solution may exist, may not exist, but the conditions fail. Which means this, uh, we cannot make any conclusive statement about existence and uniqueness of solution. Okay. So the way, so if the hypothesis of Picard's existence and uniqueness theorem are not satisfied, then you cannot make a comment on the existence and uniqueness. If it is satisfied, then you have a conclusion to make. Okay. So, these are the examples. So, in the next lecture, we will look at uh, the idea of, I mean, what the idea that Picard used to arrive at his existence result, so on. Um, but we will not give the complete detail, but the, uh, we, will, which is, we will give his method, which is called the Picard's iteration or Picard's successive approximation. So, that is kind of close enough proof to the existence result. Okay, we will do that in the next lecture. So, with this, we finish this lecture. See you in the next lecture. Thanks a lot.